WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange, during an interview with Democracy Now!, implicated Clinton as being connected to arming terrorists. Hillary's hacked emails include info on Hillary arming jihadists, Assange said. Documents obtained by several journalistic investigations reveal that Lafarge has paid taxes to the terror group to operate its cement plant in Syria, and even bought ISIS oil for years. Lafarge also has close ties to Democrat presidential candidate Hillary Clinton. Apart from being a regular donor to the Clinton Foundation, Clinton herself was a director of Lafarge in the early 1990s, and did legal work for the firm in the 1980s. During her connection to Lafarge, the firm was implicated in facilitating a CIA-backed covered arms export network to Saddam Hussein. Among its earliest benefactors was former First Lady and current presidential hopeful, Hillary Clinton. From 1990 to 1992, Clinton served on Lafarge's board of directors. Under her tenure, Lafarge's Ohio subsidiary was caught burning hazardous waste to fuel cement plants. Clinton defended the decision at the time. Then just before her husband, Bill Clinton, was elected president in 1992, Lafarge was fined $1.8 million by the Environmental Protection Agency for these pollution violations. Hillary Clinton had left the board of Lafarge in spring, just after her husband won the Democrat nomination. A year later, under Bill's presidency, the Clinton administration reduced Lafarge's EPA fine to less than $600,000. This type of quid pro quo is found to be common throughout the whole of the political apparatus in the U.S. However, it has become a specialty of the Clintons, a law the Clinton Foundation slash State Department pay for play schemes, which we highlighted in a recent article. The investigative report by the Canary goes on to reveal the nefarious nature of the Clinton slash Lafarge connection. In the late 1980s, according to an archived investigative report in the American Spectator, Hillary Clinton was connected to Lafarge when the firm was involved in facilitating CIA support for Saddam Hussein's secret weapons program. The American Spectator report from November 1996 cited sources confirming that Hillary Clinton did legal work for Lafarge in the late 1980s before she became a director. The report also claimed that Lafarge's U.S. subsidiary provided key services for the covered arms export network that supplied Saddam Hussein. To prevent exposure of that secret supply line, and collateral damage to Hillary Clinton who joined Lafarge board in 1990, just as the arms pipeline was being shut down, the Justice Department was told to bury the investigation. But investigators from other U.S. government agencies who worked on the case say they were waved off whenever they got too close to exposing the direct involvement of the intelligence community in the arms export scheme. Lafarge remains close to the Clintons to this day. In 2013, Lafarge's executive vice president for operations, Eric Olson, was a featured attendee at the Clinton Global Initiative's annual meeting. The company is a regular donor to the Clinton Foundation. The firm's up to $100,000 donation was listed in its annual donor list for 2015. Lafarge is also listed again as a donor to the Clinton Foundation for the first quarter of 2016. The dark reality of these connections to the Clinton apparatus should raise serious red flags, and must be brought to light for the American public to see. The American people have a right to see the types of activities that have been carried out by Hillary Clinton and her cronies. Since the mainstream corporate media refuses to provide a modicum of in-depth investigative coverage of the nefarious deeds undertaken by the Clintons, it is up to citizens on social media to help awaken the sleeping masses. Please share this critical information far and wide and help expose the depths of Hillary's corruption. But we can't say we want to ban Hillary, so they're not going to, you got to like hide that. No, right, you got to say you're going to have common sense gun legislation. And then, they didn't switch them and ban them all. But Hillary would support banning guns, right? Oh, for sure. Okay, yeah. yeah, I didn't know what her position was. Yeah, I think, well, she doesn't take any positions that are too terribly extreme. And I think that... In that's, public, publicly. Right. I'm James O'Keefe, spokesperson for Citizens Against Senseless Gun Violence. So far, we've shown you how Democratic staffers on Capitol Hill are perfectly willing to put these signs in their homes, showing the world that they're proudly gun-free. Okay, something that you would like to put on in your apartment or car or home? I am actually a gun. <laughs> oh, oh no! We would put we would put the sign right out here in front of this office. But not your home. Wow. You know, so the concern is, if, oh, there's no gun, 
Let me just kick down the door. Worst thing that's gonna happen. I don't, you know. Well, I mean, what I mean, then you're basically saying that that you should have a gun in your house to yeah. kind of protect it. Yeah. No, but there is. Yeah, it's so tough, right? But now it's time to take our efforts a step further by putting one of these signs in front of the White House. That's right, the White House. This week, Democrats will officially nominate Hillary Clinton at their convention in Philadelphia, a candidate who embodies honesty, integrity, and most importantly, publicly saying exactly what she means. Because we're gonna put a lot of coal miners and coal companies out of business. What I said was totally out of context from what I meant because I have been talking about helping coal country for a very long time. We are very committed to the Trans-Pacific Partnership. We'll say no to bad trade deals and unfair trade practices, including the Trans-Pacific Partnership. I believe that marriage is not just a bond, but a sacred bond between a man and a woman. I'm very, uh, very proud to state that I'm a full supporter of marriage equality right now. With Hillary Clinton in the White House, we'll finally have a president who not only wants to ban guns, but can sell it to the public. In fact, her delegates know exactly how she'll get it done. why we here at Citizens Against Senseless Gun Violence are so excited to have delegates like Mary Bayer to make sure Hillary and the Democrats can finally ban all the guns. But to ensure we have the support we need, we're going to be in Philadelphia all week to ask all the delegates to join us in our fight. Because until we have one of these signs in front of the White House, America will never be truly gun free. All right, did, did, did I get it? Good, because I've been watching a lot of Hillary lately, so I can be a better liar on camera.